I'm ready. Okay, so uh, hello, dear participants of the European Non Association Press Seminar. I'm glad to introduce the speaker of today, Rutwig Campo Amor Sturzberg from the University Universidad Complutense de Madrid. He's going to talk about competence of subalgebras in universal developing algebras. So please. Well, good afternoon. First of all, thank you to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to share some ideas. Uh, indeed, uh, the title is Commutants of Subalgebras in, in Enveloping Algebras, but it is not supposed to be uh, a really an algebraic approach, but rather a compound of different ideas or different situations where the notion of commutant comes and can be used uh, in applications. Uh, so let me see. So. Uh, the motivation obviously comes from representation theory, uh, especially in the context of branching rules and the klebsch gordon problem, uh, especially in order uh, to distinguish um, degeneracies when we have uh, multiplicities in the compositions. Obviously, mm, I will restrict to the case of uh, semi-simple algebras or uh, reductively algebras in a more broad sense, as uh, the case of solvable algebras and nilpotent algebras are completely different um, what in, in the context of enveloping algebras and much harder to analyze. And indeed, many of the, or some of the ideas that will be used are not applicable to this case. Uh, Besides the Klebsch-Gordon problem, we can speak of the generic uh, internal labeling problem. That means to find certain uh, orthonormal bases, not necessarily orthogonal, but uh, we want to um, avoid interaction between different states for some subgroup of internal symmetry or, or something like that. Uh, indeed, this is very uh, deeply related to the decomposition of enveloping algebras as a sum of representations of sub simple algebra. And then a rather mm, curious application is uh, the realization or the free description of super integrable systems. That, that is uh, to be understood in the context of dynamic and spectrum generating algebras, where we are using Hamiltonians that are related to differential operators. Then one of the questions uh, that arises in superintegrability is to what extent this superintegrability depends essentially uh, on a fixed realization. Think, for example, of quasi exactly solvable systems, etc. And <clears throat> it, uh, in some situations, we can generalize uh, the context and mm, liberate ourselves from the realization. That means we can formulate the problem as an algebraic Hamiltonian and obtain um, the constants of the motion, indeed the superintegrability property, mm, usually non-commutative, uh, independently of any realization. This is useful to examine certain classical systems and see them as um, special cases of a more broad class of uh, superintegrable systems. I will restrict myself to the case of the Rakach algebras and superintegrable systems on the spheres, which are <clears throat> nicely um, illustrated by these methods. Well, the outline is um, essentially seven points. There are some Mm, secondary mm, points that are not enumerated because of the length of the page, but mm, depending on the time, I will uh, comment on them or not. Obviously, gener generic properties, algebraic properties of commutants, then the decomposition, which is mm, useful um, for the following, and then the analytical counterpart, and that means uh, to translate the problem to symmetric algebras and then use the Berezin bracket. Uh, of course, um, this holds for the semi-simple case. If we take uh, solvable or other types of algebras, it works for 
um, for Lebedi compositions, but we must be careful um, because we do not have uh, complete reducibility of representations. And hence, it is not clear at all to what extent that method will be um, useful or not. Well, <clears throat> then you see that commutants essentially, uh, or other, otherwise, the Missile-Nagel problem essentially is a very special case of commutants in enveloping algebras. And there are three types that will be distinguished uh, one of them leads directly to the decomposition, and the others mm, have some interesting applications. As mm, rather interesting applications, I will say something about the construction of autonormal bases of eigenstates using the labeling problems and then their superintegrable systems. Indeed, uh, in the, can you see the, the, the little hand? Uh, in the first point, uh, these applications, I would also say something about the klebsch gordon problem. And then uh, the seventh and last point are some problems that arise uh, in this consideration. Well, these are some uh, references, of course not exhaustive, but um, that shows that um, the problem has been studied for many years, from very different perspectives. And well, all of them have a common kernel that I will try uh, to describe in the following. Well, <clears throat> first of all, I will use the Cherche-Chevalet uh, basis because this is the most economic and suitable presentation and many of the properties that will be used, especially uh, certain components. Sorry for interrupting you. Uh, what? Sorry for interrupting you. Uh, we see the first the slide of your talk. Is it? The, the is only the first. Only the first. It's not moving. Uh, I don't understand why. Do you see now it moving? Right, right. Now it's okay. So. Well, this was the motivation I mm -hmm. I was speaking. Okay. You, can you see the hand moving? Yes, now we see. Well, probably th 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 that is a problem with the uh, uh, full screen. So I will. Ah, yeah. As it is. So as I said, there are some references, not exhaustive, uh, but well, they are dealing many different aspects. Uh, from the physical, the geometrical, and uh, pure algebraic point of view. Uh, and then <clears throat> we begin with the uh, presentation of a simple algebra. And this is convenient because here we can see actually that many of the relations uh, can be analyzed only for a minimum number of generators, and then the, all the others will be derived from the bracket. And indeed, here we can see uh, certain structures um, certain subgroups and also the crystallographic um, structure of the root system, which plays uh, a relevant role in both uh, the weight systems, of course, and also in introducing gradings in the different uh, labeling operators and indeed in the composing elements in the enveloping algebra. So, well, the weight space are usually as done and we have the, the, the composition and here we have a first grading, which is not very interesting uh, in itself for the applications, but certainly of relevance for the classification of the algebras. Well, <clears throat> uh, for the commutants, there are mm, different approaches. I will use that given by Dixmier. Uh, we take the, the envelope in algebra. I am assuming that S is a semi-simple or at most reductively algebra. And then we take the space of uh, polynomials uh, which have at most uh, P components given by this condition. And indeed we can define here the degree or the, or the, or the grade of uh, an element by fixing the minimum number it belongs to. Um, 
As this algebra is uh, naturally filtered, we can ensure this uh, well-known properties. And indeed, the interesting point is that each of this UPS can be seen as, a, an, as an S module. Uh, since we are working with um, semi-simple algebras, we can guarantee that the enveloping algebra itself decomposes as a sum of representations. Uh, taking, for example, solvable algebras um, is much more complicated, albeit we obtain uh, modules over the, the Lie algebra, we have no um, complete decomposition and the strongest property that we can get, as far as I remember, is that the modules are triangular and strictly triangular if the algebra is nilpotent. These cases, uh, at least for the whole algebra, will not be considered. And different thing is taking either a solvable or a nilpotent subalgebra. Then we can uh, use it without much trouble. Well, uh, what interests me or us or in applications is uh, this duality, which is not exactly a duality between the usual composition in the enveloping algebra and the analytical approach given by the adjoint representation. In this case, the symmetric algebra, which could be enlarged to the functions over the dual space, etc. Indeed, uh, here we can see that we obtain, we can see that as differential operators, assuming that the lower letter uh, denotes uh, commuting coordinates on the dual space. And well, uh, usually it is easier to solve systems of differential equations, even if they are complicated, then analyzing uh, commutators in enveloping algebras. This will be um, clearly seen when um, considering the Berezin bracket, which essentially is a Poisson structure on the symmetric algebra. Well, uh, we will also use the canonical linear isomorphism from the symmetric to the enveloping algebra, which is useful for going from functions to the enveloping algebra. And well, it can be reversed. It is not so easy, but it doesn't matter because uh, we will usually uh, be considering functions on the dual space and then translate the problem and look for um, suitable representatives. That is one of the main problems because this is only the homogeneous representative of the image and we could simplify if we are using an ordered basis that is the 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 key for the difficulty for simply uh, extrapolating uh, conclusions from the analytical approach to the algebraic approach well in this case we can simply uh denote by an uppercase P the image of the homogeneous polynomials, and then we obtain a decomposition and, well, the bracket behaves well in this, um, uh, in this context, and this will be used in the following. Well, uh, first of all, since uh, we are first interested in decomposing the envelope in algebra, we have to know the dimension of the corresponding modules that will appear and uh, eventually decompose them uh, with respect to the simple algebra. This is mm, quite a trivial computation and we obtain the result. Well, now the invariant polynomials, mm, as is well known, play a relevant role, not only from the geometric point of view, because they are related to invariant differential forms on the corresponding group, etc. But <clears throat> here simply is elements of in the center of the enveloping algebra. Uh, in the case of semi-simple algebras, we know this coincides with the um, um with the rank of the algebra, and it is related with the petty numbers, etc. Uh, well, 
all these operators can be computed using trace methods that goes back to Perilomov and Popov and, and, and many others. And they can also be identified with certain polynomials um, that are solutions of the system as uh, is given here in four by the adjoint representation. Indeed, uh, if we are speaking properly, we should use the uh, notation of coadjoint representation. Well, now a commutant is simply a centralizer within the enveloping algebra and, well, elements that commute with a given element. Of course, uh, here we must distinguish whether this P is an arbitrary element in the, in the enveloping algebra or something that comes from um, the originating Lie algebra. Usually, uh, we will use either elements or subalgebras of the original algebra instead, for example, a, a polynomial of high degree, etc. Why? Because um, we are trying to use the quadrant representation, and if we are using um, non-linear elements, we have some technical difficulties. And a more prosaic reason is that uh, I have no immediate application in mind that involves uh, these polynomials up to a mm, quite strange, well, not strange, um, but um, how, how could I say a uh, curious notion that is uh, called virtual copies of uh, Lie algebras in enveloping algebras. Essentially, I will not speak about that, but it is also related to the commutant. And essentially it is to find non-linear uh, elements in the enveloping algebra, indeed um, polynomials of arbitrary degree that itself uh, with respect to a certain operation close also an algebra that uh, is similar to the original one, but multiplied all, um, by a function that can be used um, in other context of special labeling problems, indeed, in the case where we are not working with semi-simple algebras. Well, uh, also in the case of uh, simple algebras, we have the notarian uh, property, and hence we can find uh, integrity basis and the commutant is uh, finitely generated, etc. Well, uh, now, the first problem um, is the decomposition as the view car. And well, this is the notation taking into account the irreducible component span uh, by height just weight vectors with the given height uh, belonging to the dual of the um, Tartan uh, subalgebra and the expected uh, properties. And indeed, to find these, these uh, components is exactly to compute those elements that commute with the positive rules. Indeed, uh, due to the commutation properties of the, of the algebra, it is enough to consider only the simple roots as all the others are guaranteed by commutation. The interesting point in this context is that this amounts exactly to find the centralizer of the nil radical of the Borel subalgebra of the givenness. It does not depend on the basis because we can uh, play with the Weil group. And this is uh, indeed one of the first contact we have with the labeling problem. Later, we will see how this can be uh, computed in terms of differential forms. Well, and what we want is a, de a decomposition, sorry, is the vector space such that we can uh, write uh, with an ordered basis of polynomials with some uh, exponents that are possibly and usually uh, constrained by some relations. And indeed, uh, these uh, relations are dependence relations that um, are usually not living in the envelope in algebra, but in the field of fractions or even farther. They can 
be quite complicated. This is one of the reasons, for example, for not considering solvable groups, uh, because there we can have uh, very strange, indeed transcendental invariants, uh, which would uh, commute with these elements, but don't have any, as far as I know, don't have any interpretation within the um, extensions of the field of fractions. Well, uh, as we have mm, dependence relations, that means that if we compute uh, the commutant analytically, uh, I will say later how, how to do this, um, these elements are not sufficient because indeed uh, we are using generic functions and here we need uh, really polynomial relations. So that a problem is how many elements do we need um, to construct this um, decomposition? There are very few uh, examples that have been uh, computed explicitly. It can be done up to a certain rank, but then, for example, for e, a, the, the E series, it is terrible. Indeed, for, for G2, we obtain up to 60 relations. Uh, and well, and I think it was 17 or 19 polynomials, and it is quite messy. Uh, it would be nice to to give it an, an example, but uh, for the space, I, I could not reduce it in order to be readable. Well, uh, the point is that these um, polynomials generate a non-abelian polynomial algebra. And that is an important notion, for example, in the context of symmetry algebras, when we are speaking of constants of the motion that not commute with each other because we have exceeded the number of uh, the degrees of freedom of the system. Um, well, as I said, that's the main difference with the analytic approach, but we can at least uh, characterize each of the polynomials by the weight. And with weight, I mean, uh, the weight with respect to a given Cartan subalgebra. Later, we will speak of another type of weights. Uh, this is a very rough um, labeling of the elements, but at least gives some hint uh, how to look for them, either from the purely algebraic point of view, which is mm, difficult because we are working in a non commutative frame and looking for differential equations where we can use many of the tricks, well, tricks of the methods uh, to simplify the presentation. Well, uh, to say that fixing the values of AE, that means fixing these elements gives rise to certain representations. This gives a hint also how to decom, oh, sorry how to decompose it, these conditions must be satisfied. But of course, uh, modulus, the set of relations, and that is the main problem, to obtain a complete set of relations for these polynomials. That can be done uh, brute force, which is not very convenient, or using a Gröbner basis. But the problem with Gröbner basis is that uh, at least, uh, I'm speaking of myself, uh, I easily lose um, the interpretation of these polynomials. In any case, the Casimir operators of S in this case don't play a relevant role because they, are, they act as scalars. And indeed, we can reduce the commutant to some free module over these Casimir operators. Well, it is... Uh, quite mm, reasonable, but mm, not always convenient because we will see that uh, if we are we, we cut all these Casimirs in pieces, we can also obtain uh, purely mm, genuine elements of the commutant that are not invariants. Well, then structurally, this is the Hijack's weight, uh, weight vectors, etc. And of course, um, we have always that the 
I just wait is the the element in the in the wild chamber, and this um, allows to simplify the the beginning or the ansatz to compute the the commutant. And of course, the uh, the the weights, and I mean the weight with respect to a Cartan subalgebra, must always be non-zero. If it is zero, it is clearly invariant, and in that sense, uh, useless. Now, the first question is how many or uh, what is the lower bound for the elements in a basis? This is given by the number in this case of invariants of the nil radical of the Borel subalgebra of S. Uh, if we do this analytically, indeed, we can extend a basis of the this is indeed the, 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 the triangular decomposition and uses the positive roots and the negative roots and the zero space uh, and restrict uh, only to the differential operators or the polynomials that are, that are exactly in the nilpotent part. And here we can see that there is a distinction because uh, those elements that do not depend on the X are clearly the invariants of the of this near radical, and the others are uh, mixed elements. I mean, indeed, uh, in analytical terms, they correspond to differential invariants for some realization that exceeds the di the dimension of the subalgebra. So it is always larger than um, the number of invariants of the subalgebra. Indeed. Uh, it can be computed by matrix methods. And if the subalgebra is sufficiently small, the number of solutions, independent solutions, is always the different, the difference of the dimensions. It collapses only for certain cases uh, where for some principal subalgebras. Well, uh, in the case of the nil radicals of the classical series, the the lower bound is given by all these elements. I The most interesting case is E8. Uh, but well, if uh, somebody has worked explicitly with the adjoint representation of E8, he will remember, he or she will remember that it is quite ugly. But um, that is especially an interesting case for reasons, uh, well, for applications, for example, in the theory of Katsumudi algebras, etc. Well, we need a certain number. There are always uh, the n zero is exactly the number of mixed operators that we need to cover uh, the holes that appear because we are not using um, sufficient commuting elements in the subalgebra. This can be uh, computed easily. Later, we will see what happens for arbitrary algebras. Here it is clear because uh, it is uh, the rank plus uh, the cardinal of the positive roots. And we, if we add this number again, we have the um, dimension of S. But in general, and especially for non-regular uh, subalgebras, um, the numbers can be mm, quite different. Well, uh, this is only a short justification how to use the root system, which is very nice in, the, in this case, to derive exactly that number for arbitrary ranks. And it is using the maurer cartan equations and choosing some element which has a maximum index. Indeed, this is exactly the same as computing the rank of the matrix. Uh, I, well, I, I didn't wrote uh, the matrix explicitly, uh, but it is exactly the same. As the matrix is uh, skew symmetric, we can um, rewrite this in terms of differential forms, and we obtain indeed uh, a closed system, which is the equation 19. And of course, uh, since we are working with the whole um, root system, we can say whenever the coefficient is zero or not. Well, uh, it um, it can be shown. It is uh, 
that the rank of the matrix, this R prime we saw uh, before, is just two times the index, the maximal index of a generic form within the system of Maura Cartan forms. Um, and the number for the classical series is given exactly almost by the rank, but uh, for example, for AL, it is uh, the integral part, so it is um, it uh, diverges a, a little. For the B and C series, it is exactly the same. And for the uh, orthogonal series, it depends on the parity of, of the rank and the exceptional algebra is always exactly the rank. Well, uh, this would be a short justification. I don't think it is necessary to, um, to use it but uh, simply to consider uh, the sum of all the, the roots, then take the corresponding differential form, uh, which is given um, by this expression, because essentially this is a distribution, and then uh, divide by parity. The only difference, if you see, for example, this formula and the next one, is that one sums up to p minus q minus one and the other to p minus q minus two. But uh, structurally, it is exactly the same. And it takes only into account that we have an even or odd number of terms. And both um, have a certain maximal degree and it can be easily justified that adding any other two form uh, does not alter this index, hence, we can uh, justify it easily. Well, uh, this would be exactly the matrix I was speaking about. And this is, uh, it can be seen as mm, the result of a two form and hence the rank of this must be even. And we take now not um, the neuradical of Umporus of Alves, but an arbitrary subalgebra, uh, especially those that are singular, singular embeddings of algebras, that is that they have a, a special index are the interesting ones. Those uh, otherwise, for example, if you take the canonical embeddings of the orthogonal algebras, well, yeah, you obtain the gilfan cycling patterns, or if you take the symplectic uh, one, the Jalobenko patterns, but um, they are multiplicity free embeddings and hence there is no problem uh, in obtaining a description of any of the irreducible representations. Um, well, as I said, that is the number of functional uh, solutions, and that is the lower bound to be considered as a commutant in the envelope in algebra, because again, it may appear that there are a lot of solutions, but they are rational uh, uh, functions or even non-rational functions that are not in the envelope in algebra and hence must be discarded. As we are working with uh, semi-simple algebras and properly behaved subgroups, that doesn't happen. Uh, for example, if you take the, um, the fantastic book by uh, Anishchi, Greenberg and Gorbacevich, uh, they are there is an explanation why we can always find uh, polynomials. Well, uh, the interesting point is to replace the not the commutators of non-commutative generators by something that commutes, that meet my commuting variables. And this is done uh, introducing in the symmetric algebra, the variance in bracket, which is indeed a Poisson bracket. And well, this is again the symmetrization map then we can see that we can always find some additional function that is uh, the symmetric representative of this. And well, this would be the expansion. And this is exactly the term that will tell us that we must be careful because not any choice of commuting elements will always lead to commuting polynomials. Uh, then we have this formula. This was done by Alshansky. And the lower order terms, these are mm, not dangerous, but mm, they must be treated carefully. This is, this is what is usually called uh, the Berezin bracket. 
And the main difference is because we could have elements that commute at the, at the level of the Berezin bracket, but that have terms of order the p plus q minus two. That means that there is some uh, rest term that does not appear in the commutator, but that leads to non-commuting um, symmetrization polynomials. Well, to this extent, um, this can be avoided if we define um, a technical property that this this uh, that to say that the pair is factorizable if it cannot be decomposed and a product like this. Look that here we have a1, al, and here it is the same, but in the re reverse order. And these, of course, are commuting elements, etc. This could happen. Uh, this, this has never been observed for the usual um, embedding chains of reductive algebras, but it is not excluded that for arbitrary elements in envelope in algebras, you can construct uh, objects like this. Hence, uh, this must, mm, it is convenient to verify this. Otherwise, uh, we will probably not obtain uh, commuting elements. Well, this generalizes more or less easily to any combination in the envelope in algebra. And once we have settled this property, then yes, we can say that if the pair uh, cannot be factorized as that, then commuting at the Berezin level is the same as having um, commuting um, representatives in the enveloping algebras. Well, uh, as an example of the composition, and I will go a little um, faster, take, for example, the SL3R, which is the simplest of the, yes, it is the simplest of the, the compositions. The SL2R is trivial. And here, um, indeed, it suffices to consider the A13, that is uh, exactly a kind of diagonal of the triangle, and hence, uh, whatever vanishes with A13 vanishes with all the rest. Well, and here we can find uh, the, the Boris subalgebra is nothing but the Heisenberg algebra, and there are exactly uh, six elements the invariants are not necessary, but we have here and here. And then, of course, this element, properly, we should not count uh, the elements of the subalgebra as belonging mm, to the commutant. But mm, that differs. There are people that uh, use it and people that don't use it. In any case, all other elements uh, have a fixed degree, no, a fixed degree, no, a fixed weight with respect to the subalgebra. And in this case, there is only one relation because we have seven, seven operators, but uh, there are only six, they are functionally independent and that exhausts the number, the uh, computing elements. This generates a quadratic algebra. This quadratic algebra has been used, uh, I think, in Calogero models. But um, in terms of the compositions, we obtain exactly this with one relation, this A3, A4. Well, uh, now more interesting, the general scheme for reduction groups. Uh, usually we can restrict to take only one group the rest of the chain is usually considered to obtain internal operators that are, uh, well, that are not necessarily um, polynomials, but can be elements either in the Catan subalgebra or some invariant of some subgroup of the subgroup that depends on the specific situation. Uh, well, the number uh, of uh, labels is clear because of the structure of the root system. And here again, we have the N0, that is the number of uh, operators that commute with the subgroup that must be found and that are not, not invariants of either the S algebra or the S prime algebra. And this L prime is, uh, well, that this happens whenever the group and the subgroup share some operator, some invariant. Usually for serious uh, embeddings, this never happens. So we will consider it there. There are three types. 
that interest. Uh, the most important. The first one is what is called the Raga operators uh, that corresponds simply to take the, the labeling problem uh, with respect to the Cartan subalgebra. The second one, uh, this is called the external, is to take uh, two copies of the same algebra, then mixed both copies in order to generate the subalgebra, and then uh, consider the labeling problem. This is um, the method or one of the approaches to obtain the Klebs Gordon series, and even for those, which is almost any uh, simply algebra. Uh, where the exact formula for the branching rules for uh, Kronecker products is not known to derive empirical formula. The third one is exactly what we have already seen, the decomposition. And in all of these cases, we have that uh, commutants, are, uh, commutants contain always a maximal abelian subalgebra. And this abelian subalgebra is exactly what we um, call a uh, subalgebra of labeling operators. Well, uh, this is merely to say that uh, to discard the Casimir operators um, as diagonal uh, elements acting on, on any state and on any representation is not always convenient because we can cut up these invariants and obtain genuine uh, labeling operators. Uh, this is done. Indeed, this is um, a kind of a contraction of, of the algebra, indeed, uh, to the, um, how is this called, the semi-direct sum of the subalgebra and um, an abelian subspace. But what interests me is this, this defines a, um, a double grading in the operator, so that we can introduce an additional um, distinction between these operators. It has a certain degree concerning the variables of the subgroup and a certain degree concerning the variables of the defining or characteristic representation. Obviously, if the alpha is zero, then we obtain invariants of the subgroup and the, uh, they are not very interesting. Uh, for uh, distinguishing mm, degeneracies. Well, uh, all these um, pieces satisfy the condition that they belong to the commutant. But of course, um, we must ask whether any of these uh, operators can be obtained in this way. I don't know the answer. I suspect that it is not true uh, because uh, they are probably not all obtainable as a trace operator. And if it cannot be obtained as a trace operator, this is a very strong hint that uh, we cannot cover um, all the possibilities dividing these uh, B-graded operators. Well, uh, as a first application, as I, as I said, to obtain an uh, orthogonal basis. One of the striking features is that many of the classical bases used in the literature, for example, uh, the Elliott model, uh, the Barkman series, etc., they are not orthogonal because they are using repeatedly the same operators. Whether they, they, they were aware of, of, of this situation or not, I don't know. But in any case, uh, the labelings are quite artificial and must be adapted to each particular case. This procedure is completely general uh, and works well. I think it works always. I have no proof because nobody can, uh, can analyze all the possibilities, but we have never found, and among maybe six or 700 uh, different um, reductions analyzed, we have never found a case where this does not uh, hold. Well, and there are four types. As I said, the first set would be simply to distinguish the representation of the big algebra. This would distinguish the parts of the 
subalgebra, I mean the subduced representations. Then these, the third one, that they, they are the genuine labeling um, operators that are, as I said, possibly uh, trace operators or otherwise arbitrary elements in the commutant and there is no general method to obtain it, but they separate copies of representations of the subalgebra that appear twice or more. And finally, uh, these are the usual internal operators. Uh, they can either uh, be obtained from farther chains or uh, the Cartan subalgebra or any other any other method. Well, and indeed, since these uh, operators commute, usually uh, we can um, find that they are normal operators. It is not required that they are emission, but it suffices that they are normal operators. Uh, the expectation value which is this one can be discarded. And then we can uh, by step by step diagonalize the remaining elements. And well, it is, this is very uh, summarized here, but this can be done. And if required, it is not always the case, we can uh, normalize using the Gram-Smith method. Well, for example, and, and this is useful, uh, especially in the context of boson realizations. Indeed, this is um, a realization by first order differential operators. Um, take, uh, for example, the, uh, the G2 and the Cartan subalgebra. This would be the Rakach operators. Um, indeed, these four elements generate a certain A2 subalgebra and two additional elements uh, generate the characteristic representation. That means uh, we only need to consider these elements to obtain our basis. Well, here all can be done with traces. One question is here, each of the particular traces that appears in here uh, separately, I mean, we have here, this is the degree with respect to the subalgebra and to the representation. And there are three types that are glued together. But if even if we separate this one and this one and this one, we obtain additional operators. The question is whether this can be done um, generally or not. As I said, I don't have an answer yet. Uh, obviously, the quadratic Casimir operator can never be used uh, to, um, to label any kind of things because it has already done his work as a metric tensor and hence it does never provide anything that is uh, not redundant. In this case, if you take all these combinations, they all commute. So here, indeed, the decomposing the high just the, the special uh, sixth order operator would provide exactly the number of labels that we need. And the simplest um, representation with uh, degeneracy is obviously the adjoint representation. We see that here exactly we can divide it. And well, interesting question, I don't know the answer uh, neither, is can we always find a set of commuting operators, the eigenvalues of which on representations are rational? Probably not, but mm, that should be proved. Well, uh, very quickly for the Klebsch-Gordon for the Klebsch gordon series, uh, it is there's a lot of work, especially by Klimik and Gavrilik, uh, concerning. Uh, this problem and any 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 symbolic computer package that works is based exactly on their work, especially on this one. So uh, that was indeed the starting point to um, to try to propose an alternative method, which is essentially computing some operators, diagonalize them and compute eigenvalues because it's easier. And here the trick is simply to mix both copies so that the first, indeed this is exactly the same, the same, the same procedure that we use in superalgebras. 
the, the, the zero block is a subalgebra, the second block is a representation and the combination of the second block falls in the first block. And this uh, works extremely well, but only, only uh, for the, uh, for these algebras, I mean, for the external labeling problem, because these properties that we can always obtain um, identities between the operators having different degrees does not hold in the case of the internal labeling problem. Uh, actually, because um, there are jumps in the um, possible degrees that appear in the decomposition. Uh, with this, it can be shown that uh, we can always separate the generacies and the uh, tensor products using exactly these operators. And there are nice formula concerning the leading terms, which, because the leading term of a certain Casimir gives you exactly the information how it will split up in uh, smaller parts. And well, as a second application, as I'm running short of time, uh, is the superintegrable systems from commutants. This, uh, this holds not only for the case of quadratic polynomials, there are other cases, for example, some applications in uh, many body mechanics, et cetera, where we can use uh, third order, fourth order, Hamiltonians, et cetera, but Essentially, the formula is, is exactly the same. We have some symmetry algebra, and our Hamiltonian uh, is given by some in terms of some subalgebra or some differential operators, but that can always be translated to, to some al uh, algebraic uh, frame. And two possibilities the classical one, this, this commutes abelian symmetry, this is the Liouville case, and non abelian, we have more more integrals than degrees of freedom. And this, this gives interesting cases. Indeed, uh, there's a lot of work on um, of these systems, for example, Steckel uh, systems, which are always looking for polynomial constants of the motion that are either quadratic or either of Hydra order. And then someone, I don't really don't know who was the first to ask it, said, why not use the envelope in algebras? Well, uh, for the case of the superintegral systems on the spheres, um, it is curious that this is exactly uh, given by the uh, commutant of the Cartan subalgebra of the SLN uh, algebra. And well, we can use here these um, elementary monomials, which are indeed like a cyclic permutation of, of the indices, and these um, give exactly the basis of the commutant and allows us um, to compute easily the dimension, etc. And of course, there are many more uh, of such polynomials than needed, I mean, than uh, functionally independent, and we have a lot of relations that must be considered. Uh, for this reason, it is not exactly very easy and uh, pleasant to make computations uh, with these algebras. Well, the case n, n equal to is uh, worthless because it does not give um, any usual information, but for any other n, we always obtain an algebra that can be, um, that is of degree n minus one. And I mean that um, any commutator is a product of at most n minus one elements. That depends whether or not we are considering um, the basis as a free module over the Casimir operators or not. But uh, for example, in this case, there is only one relation. This is um, observed that we, we saw before uh, another, rela another relation, in quadratic relation uh, from the analytic point of view, this is exactly the same, but translated directly to the envelope in algebra, and we obtain a quadratic algebra. And the interesting point is that in this case, the invariance with some change of basis, etc., and separating the skew symmetric and the symmetric part can be brought into this form. This is essentially a Rakach algebra of rank one, and that our Hamiltonian 
Yes. Well, the Hamiltonian for the superintegrable system on this sphere can be written in terms of these Casimir operators. And more than that, the interesting part is that the third order Casimir collapses because you see it is given in terms of the quadratic one and the, these constants that appear uh, in the potential terms. And indeed, they are uh, elements of the Cartan algebra. And with this reformulation, uh, we can rewrite our polynomials um, in the enveloping algebra as mm, dynamically. I mean, these components of angular momentum plus uh, plus these functions. And this is exactly this is exactly the structure or the non-abelian symmetry algebra of the superintegrable system on the sphere, up to this relation. Uh, which is uh, well known. And if we rescale once more, I have not included that, then we obtain exactly the classical Rakach algebra. Uh, as this does not depend on the three, because I have nowhere used that we are only using three directions, this can be generalized to any um, n um, greater than four. The Hamiltonian is exactly the same form. The constraints are exactly the same form. The realization is exactly of the same form. The only thing is how to derive a trace operators, the Casimis. This can be then exactly using this matrix, which is uh, quite, mm, quite easy to compute in, in, in any case. And then we obtain exactly the same type of relation up to this constant and any, uh, oh, this, this is a mistake. This should be for n uh, greater or equal than three. I mean, any, uh, any Casimir other than the quadratic collapses. Uh, and that means it is a function of the, the constants and on the potential and our quadratic Casimir. And again, this gives, after many cumbersome manipulations, a realization of the Rakach algebra rank n minus one, and the Hamiltonian can be written exactly as uh, elements in our commutant. Well, um, I, st I still have two minutes to comment on the further problems. Well, problems that arise. Uh, quite a lot, but only to enumerate a few, uh, to find generating functions for the eigenvalues and the labeling problem. This is uh, quite important, and this would be a step farther. Of course, uh, we have um, eigenvalue formula for the Casimir operators when, once a basis has been established, but um, this goes farther because we are trying to obtain generic formula for things that are not exactly invariant, but that can be used to characterize the representation theory. Um, for SU3, which is uh, quite the same as SL3, there exists some formula of this type, not yet developed for any representation, but uh, this can be done. Well, uh, a second interesting um, application is to find empirical formula for the branching rules in the Klebs Gordon problem. For example, if you take uh, quite complicated or high ranked simple algebras and make generic uh, double, triple, or uh, NR um, chronicle products, and you want to know how this decomposes, uh, the Klimic method mm, works, but is extremely difficult and long. And maybe using this approach, we can mm, make some mm, well, linear algebra, finally, uh, ansatz to separate exactly that and divine what could be the, uh, the generic formula. As far as I know, there are only two exact formulas for the decompositions. Of course, we are not counting A1. Um, but I don't remember uh, who discovered them. Well, then uh, this is also an important thing, which is related exactly to the so-called quasi-solvable exact systems. 
uh, the embedding problem of arbitrary algebras into enveloping algebras. Uh, there is only one case well known, which was done by Avsienko and Turbiner uh, for SL2R. And uh, as far as I know, and as far as he told me recently, nothing has been done since then. So that is um, one of the ideas that are living in the ether. Uh, maybe this works. And then, well, is a direct application, classification of algebraic Hamiltonians and related symmetry algebras. And this, re, uh, this is more concise because uh, they are the Raka algebras on, on one side. There are uh, other special types of algebras in another of another types and other structures, etc. And the aim is to find some uniform approach because often uh, we have found that apparently very different structures are uh, are quite the same. And well, uh, quadratic deformations um, is another is another possible way, but uh, there I must uh, recognize that uh, I'm not an expert. And finally, well, the super super algebras is 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 quite the same. And of course, um, the um, the purely algebraic approach. I mean, in the sense of Dixmier, etc. But uh, there's so much uh, interesting and profound results in that direction that I have um, not really uh, the hope of finding something new uh, in this context. And I think I have exhausted uh, all my time. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Other questions? Well, if no, let's turn the speaker again. And thank you for your talk. And we resume in one week. So mm -hmm. see you. So I, I, so the sharing is yes. finished.